He was UBS's star trader, but Kweku Adeboli is tonight beginning a seven-year prison sentence after being found guilty of Britain's biggest ever city fraud. The rogue trader ran up losses of £1.4 billion on behalf of the employer. At one point, the losses could have been more than five times that amount. But he was cleared of four charges of falsifying accounts to cover his tracks. There's flash photography from the start of this report by our business correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy. Come on, guys. Come on. Got to move quicker than that, boys. Kweku Adeboli entered court this morning a free man. Tonight, he leaves as the biggest rogue trader in British banking history. Arrested last year, he was head boy at his English public school and a star trader at UBS. But today, a jury found him guilty of deliberately abusing his position to make fictitious trades that, in the end, nearly toppled Switzerland's biggest bank. As he began his sentencing, Mr Justice Keith said, you will forever be known as the man responsible for the largest trading loss in British banking history. And he added, the tragedy for you is that you had everything going for you. Your fall from grace is spectacular. To all those around him, Kweku Adeboli appeared to be a man whose career prospects and future earnings were taking off. He looked the part, he was articulate, and he seemingly had an answer for everything. But behind this facade lay a trader who was running completely out of control. Mr Adeboli began his fraudulent trading in 2008. It paid off and he banked huge profits, making a name for himself as a star trader. His salary and bonus soared from £10,000 in 2008 to a quarter of a million in 2011. But last summer, the markets turned against him. Panicked, Mr Adeboli switched his bets, hoping the market would rally, but it kept falling. So he covered up his losses with false trades, praying the market would eventually rise and make good the loss. It never happened. On September the 14th last year, in a series of urgent phone calls, bosses interrogated Mr Adeboli about his trades and if the bank was covered. Hey, Will. Hey, how are you doing? I'm all right. Good stuff. Um, sorry, I've just got a couple more questions. Everyone's getting very excited about this credit exposure. Yeah. But yesterday we were talking about the fact that we thought we had about two billion of exposure to, like, well, I thought we said uh, Sockgen and, and at the time, but is that not um, is that not right? Well, I'm, I'm con which. When you say you think the price has gone, um, if they didn't settle it, we'd be in the. Sh but concerns were quickly escalating, and within minutes, another accountant was on the phone demanding answers. So you're going to confirm exactly which counterparties are involved and the quantum of the exposure. OK, will do. Thanks. Bye. It was then he knew the game was up, and he ran. He told his bosses he was going to the doctors, but instead he came here to this Catholic church around the corner, and he prayed. Then he went home, sat down at his computer, and prepared to write an email that would shake the bank to its very foundations. At 2.30 in the afternoon, the bombshell landed. Hello, Will. It's with great stress and disappointment that I write this mail. The ETF trades that you see on the ledger are not trades that have been done with a counterparty, as I've previously described. The aim had been to try and make the money back, but clearly that has failed. I take full responsibility for my actions and the storm that will now ensue. I'm deeply sorry to have left this mess for everyone and to have put my bank and my colleagues at risk. Thanks, Kweku. Mr Adeboli then returned to the UBS offices, where he was questioned throughout the night by his bosses before being arrested here by police at 3.30 the following morning and charged on several counts of fraud and false accounting. Throughout the next several days of his interrogation by police, Mr Adeboli didn't say a single word. The case has direct parallels with Nick Leeson, who up until today was Britain's biggest rogue trader after recording losses of nearly £830 million that bankrupted Bearings in 1995. He pleaded guilty and served six years in jail. 
Like Leeson, Mr Adeboli admitted the false trades and the loss, but his defence was that he didn't act dishonestly. He said the bank encouraged him, that they knew what he was doing and turned a blind eye, and that other traders were doing the same thing. In the end, the jury found him guilty of fraud, but acquitted him of the four charges of false accounting. It's an indication that the jury were not satisfied that Mr Adderbury was greedy or that he did anything for his personal gain, quite the opposite. He knows that he has to spend some more time in prison. He's already thinking about the future. And he too also is grateful for the fairness of the trial process. And it's important that he has had an opportunity to represent his side of the case, which, as I said earlier, is very different to the story that uh, UBS was saying at the outset. UBS lost its then chief executive because of the scandal and billions were wiped from its market value. Tonight, the bank said it was glad the case had reached its conclusion but made no further comment. Mr Adeboli was taken away tonight in a police van back to Wandsworth Prison, a far cry from his £4,000 a month loft in the city.